Welcome back. My name is Andrei Suslenko. This is Tiger Conference. Volodymyr Romelan is joining me here. Welcome, Volodymyr. Thank you. I um, have to remind you that Volodymyr is the Minister of Infrastructure. And we have 20 minutes to discuss uh, absolutely important issues for Ukraine now um, in context of Tiger Conference. The theme of Tiger Conference in 2016 is Ukraine 2020. And my first question to you, as to anyone who sits in your chair, what is your vision of Ukraine in 2020, but a realistic one? Uh, modern. I would say that every time when I think about Ukraine, it's modern type of living, modern type of governance, modern type of infrastructure. Actually, I'm focused on infrastructure and it's my commitment and my personal KPI to show the nation that everything is possible and bad roads could transform into good ones if you have good financial uh, support, if you have good uh, organization of work, and if you do everything right. To do right, it's very simple. <laughs> if you are in schemes, it's a complicated issue because you have always uh, talk to people and explain that it's not a scheme, it's something good. But the reality doesn't meet your words. And uh, for me, it's very easy to, to talk to people because I, I do what I do and there is no like a secret chambers behind my back. But definitely there are a lot of obstacles, uh, there are a lot of limitations. But being an, as, as a minister, I always focused on having results. And I would like to avoid situations and I explain why, why I failed. Minister. How would you describe us to our viewers and to yourself and to myself the biggest losses? Um, you know, the biggest problem is that uh, we didn't really change the country. Every revolution, this is a history, it's not my words, uh, it's a change of elite, uh, it's a change of, by some, by different means. It could be physical uh, massacre, it yeah. could be kind of simple replacement and put them uh, away. In case of Ukraine, it didn't happen. So simply innocent people were injured, shut down, and uh, but not added. Uh, second issue, great loss, uh, that we are too much focused on declarations, nice words, and sometimes on PR instead of real hard work. Maybe this is a problem of the nation that you would like to get looks like that we'd like to get high salaries doing nothing. But this is the problem of the top officials because they are leaders who should guide nation forward. And the greatest responsibility uh, belong to them. Unfortunately, and I do love sometimes, not, not on the regular basis, but sometimes to read a mirror of the week. And the last article was very right, that elite is concentrated on their own families, but not on the country. And this is the problem we start with, that we cannot look wider. I'm always inspired by the uh, Sweden experience. Right. When each entrepreneur, when he starts a business or she starts a business, they don't think about the local mar market. They don't. They think about a worldwide Global. market. And so this is very right scale. approach. And this is the problem we face right now because every every time we do something, we think about the village, we think about the town, but not the country or the whole world. So then, if we consider wins, on the contrary to losses, what would you name as the biggest wins that you and your team and the whole reformators regime had? Um, First of all, society won, and uh, we uh, simply neglect the facts what was in 2013, 2012. The step forward country made is really tremendous, and there are a lot of changes everywhere. Uh, I'm almost sure that if it didn't happen, we would have right now another Russian state with some red, red stars and Putin everywhere in, in, in the cities. It didn't happen, we survived, we fought them back. Uh, but definitely uh, we have a lot of to do and there are a lot of tasks which are not accomplished still. Another great success is the freedom of speech. Another great success is Ivara's story, right. who really uh, ruined the silence of bureaucracy. Uh, it was not used to the full extent, unfortunately, and it didn't change a lot, but at least there is a very big, uh, 
I would say, threat right now is that everybody is afraid of having Ivaras 2 on board. Ivaras mentioned that now you and your colleagues who are still reforming this country, who are from the new generation, I would say, of politicians, that you are getting less and less esteem and power to go on with the fight, to go on with the tackle, anti-corruption tackle, giving the results. You are a result-oriented person. I can feel that. And my question is following, how much esteem do you have? How much power do you still have? Uh, you know, I'm from Lviv, Western Ukraine, and I'm stubborn. And uh, I have my picture of ideal Ukraine in my mind that keeps me going. And I do believe, and sometimes when I'm desperate with something didn't happen, I achieve another small result, small victory on my path, and it helps survive. It uh, helps to motivate myself that yes, you are doing right stuff. And if there were somebody else, not a fact that he would achieve the same. No regrets? Uh, there are a lot of regrets, definitely. I miss my son. I don't see my family. Uh, I waste my time. You do? Uh, actually, I s sacrifice for the country, but I, I waste my time on my personal, in my personal life. But that's your choice. Yeah, it's my choice. And, and that's, that's why I feel very much motivated and, and it inspires me a lot. But on the other hand, if to have a kind of five, mo moments in, five minutes in quiet, I, I do understand that there are something I put aside. Minister Milan, um, you mentioned desperation at some point, so how often do you feel desperation these I, days? I would say that since recently much more often. What are the reasons behind this? Um, you know, from the very first day of my appointment I was trying to convince people that, look, we should go further and if we do right things right now, we would achieve much bigger results if we keep on doing business as usual. Uh, this strategy was successful, mm -hmm. but it didn't last too, lo too long. Right now it's almost incredible hard, it's, it's very hard to convince that there is a reform first and then business second. Okay, I hear you. Could you name or list things that you're proud of, the changes that inspire you and your team and maybe some of the Ukrainians that you've made on your position? We definitely broke the eyes with uh, independent CEOs appointed at the Ministry of Infrastructure and I'm the only one minister who made it. Uh, we definitely started corporatization with our biggest companies. Uh, we launched massive road reconstruction in Ukraine right. this year and nobody believed including myself, in the beginning of 2016, that we will make it. I tell you frankly... But you it made was, it? It was kind of my na nightmare that there is some kind of uh, promised money allocated for road reconstruction, but there is not a single company ready for it, not a single uh, uh, regional division of Ukraf Tudor ready for that that we were simply stuck in corruption and uh, useless uh, uh, rat race. But actually we did it. And uh, more than 1,500 kilometers uh, are reconstructed. And a lot of municipal roads uh, also undergone significant change. I'm very happy that I was also lucky to appoint very promising head of Ukrovtodor. And he's a very good politician, and, you know, and it's a kind of nice story for me because I, <laughs> I teach him a lot here in Ukraine, right. but I learn a lot from him as a politician, how to run European politics, not Ukrainian style of, the, of it. Okay, what are then your, if this is the thing that you are proud of, what are the, your, your disappointments then? Uh, it took too long. Uh, it took too long, okay. It took too long, and uh, if we are talking about some physical transformation, it's okay, I'm realistic that road cannot be constructed within uh, 24, 24 hours. hours. Right. But uh, if we talk about people appointment, yes, definitely you should have some reasonable uh, time f to find them, but it should be done like this. And if uh, CEO appointed proves that he is the one, he should work uh, in full capacity. If he is not, it also happens. He should be replaced in a second. Which of your recent uh, announcements of new CEOs or, or rulers of, of departments and, and state-run companies, which of these CEOs are you proud of and which are you not proud of? Who delivers what you were expecting from him or her and who is not delivering? This is important. 
Sure. Um, I would say that I'm happy what, uh, with what Smilianski, head of uh, Ukrpost, is doing. I'm very glad with Novak because he got to the point in very short period of time. It took him only maybe two, three weeks to get the sense of what's going on in Ukraine. Um, I'm a bit uh, disappointed, or sometimes more than a bit, with uh, things what's going on in Ukrainian railways. And unfortunately, uh, Ukrainian railways are still under huge influence from outer world. It shouldn't be the case. And uh, with the very beginning of my tenure as a Minister of Infrastructure, I was telling my CEOs the only thing, just do reform and I will protect you from, poli from political enemies or from uh, crooks. So you're still doing your job of protecting them from political crooks and uh, political influencers, but some of them, they don't do their job or or what? Uh, I don't want to speculate on that, sure. but uh, let's say situation with Ukrainian railways doesn't make me really happy. How long can you, how long do you feel you can remain at this position? How long do you, do you think you can still be in power, still be in control of things? Uh, you know, I was kidding to my friends that uh, in summer I was ready to resign every second day. <laughs> Right now I'm Bad ready news. to resign every day, but every day. Uh, I should do my job and I will do it until I'm successful or until I can change something. If there, I see there is a, like a real wall and there is no ch real chance to, to break it, I should quit. How big is the pressure on you, Mr. Minister? Uh, you know, I, I believe it's always a pressure if you're a politician or if you're a Top, top government of official. So I, I don't think that we are kind of uh, garden keepers that simply enjoy environment and doing some tree job. But uh, I'm ready to stand the pressure when it's about reform, when you should prove people that yes, it's a painful, or it's not very uh, easy story, but in the end there is a light and you, we are moving right direction and we should overcome it. But it's very difficult to stand the pressure when you, let's say, in the morning talking to Hutchinson Ports or DP World entering the country and second visitor after, the, after them, there is kind of MP or some guy with very shadow reputation talking to you about some uh, company to steal. This, this kind of pressure I would like to avoid definitely. How, how can we avoid this kind of pressure? You, you know, one would say political willing from someone from upstairs, let's say President Poroshenko or Prime Minister Groisman or whoever is in that at this, those positions. So th is this is political willing the first thing that needs to be changed in here or needs to be actually applied? Um, in order to overcome everything, we should have system in place. Actually, okay. what, what we are doing right now, uh, it's uh, implementing new system to run the at least the infrastructure uh, field right way. Right. Uh, Definitely we cannot have kind of a city of sun uh, as a minister of infrastructure. It, it should be a uh, country of sun. And this is a big challenge we have. We, uh, until we have top crooks imprisoned, there is no chance to change, to change the country. I'm keep on telling that, that look, I can hire and fire tons of people, but if they see and understand that there, is, there is no real prosecution, there is no real punishment, there is no real imprisonment, uh, they would keep on stealing money. It's a human nature. If you are not watched proper way, on the second day, in a month's time, in a year time, you will try to do it once and will keep on doing that forever. Human capital is very important. And I remember we, we've been talking about that a year ago on the radio station. And you, vis you visited um, Reformators Fuck Up Nights as mm -hmm. well. And probably you have some experience from, from that night and also from your way of handling the human capital and inside the Ministry of Infrastructure. So I'm just curious, how important is it for you to have right people near you? And do you have these people near you or don't? Um, you know, the yesterday's evening it was real kind of uh, reload for me. Reload. Okay. I just simply forgot about problems I face and listened to, to my friends of mine. Uh, concerning the ministry, I'm proud of my team. It's a very complicated one because there is not a single uh, friend of mine working by me. 
but all of them are very strong personalities. They fight each other, they are trying to be the best ones, and it motivates a lot. But it also it's, it's a problem, because it's not the uh, secret that if you're in some kind of governing body or even in business, 70-80% of your time you spend for people, right. communicating with them. There is no other chance to handle big, big organization. Communication is a big issue, not only for, for external communication for ministers and, and MPs, meaning the way you distribute information to us, regular people, or to us as media, but then how do you do your internal communication? How, how painful is that in your ministry, or how proper is that? Uh, you better ask my, 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 my colleagues, but uh, I think it's, it's done in in right way. Okay. Uh, we are under reform as well. Uh, we were the first one to complete uh, overview by European Union. We were the first one to launch technical office for reforms at the ministry. And we do believe as soon as we have good salaries, we will get the best personnel on board to run the infrastructure in right way. because. You should have a vision for infrastructure. It's not the thing that uh, lasts only one year time or one fiscal year. You should have a strategy for five, 10, 20 right. years for investors to come, to, ha to have high uh, return on their investments, to work in a very safe and uh, sustainable environment. Coming back to the strategy, if we're talking about 2020, which is Tiger's idea over here, and not only it's uh, Dmitry Shimkev's idea, you remember that in President's mm -hmm. 2020. So let's assume we're, we are in 2020. Which strategy should your ministry um, apply and imply until 2020 if it's 2016 today? What do you do right now? First of all, we are focused on roads. And I believe that we, we have a uh, road fund uh, working at its full capacity since 2020. Uh, it means that we have a a precise sum of money for each year and we can build roads not only during one year but know what kind of roads we can make within upcoming years. Okay. Uh, it's about maritime industry. Uh, we would like to have by, uh, our seaports privatized or concessioned by 2020 and I really put all my efforts to have major companies from the world coming to Ukraine and investing and I'm very happy that DP World is upcoming as well because um, one of my real favorite guys in the universe right now is Elon Musk. Right, and DP World Inspires is one of the it, yeah. investors of Elon Musk and they are, they are the first company to try his Hyperloop in Dubai. And my dream is to have the same in Ukraine, but it's very, it's awesome. not maybe 2020, it's yeah. 20, 20, 20, 2040. 25. Yeah, something like, something like that. Uh, Concerning aviation, definitely it's open skies and uh, open skies, biggest international uh, airport operators working in Ukraine. A good choice and good cheap prices for, uh, for Ukrainians to fly uh, all over the, uh, the world. Uh, concerning inland waterways, it's another, I would say, um, feature of, of, my, of me being a, as a minister. Right. We would like to uh, reverse the road, uh, the, the rivers. Uh, we would like to have uh, heavy traffic of barges and passenger cruise boats uh, along Ukrainian rivers, and it's worth it. Uh, Ukrainian railways. Oh, yeah. and, uh, another dream that we should have fast uh, speed train by 2020 coming through Ukraine, maybe from uh, uh, Kiev through Lviv to Warsaw okay. and Berlin. Um, uh, definitely from Kyiv to Odessa and then to Simferopol and maybe to Kuban, let us see. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Good point. Uh, so this are the basic, basic, basic this is the strategy the dreams that you have. Yes, and actually it's everything is possible. It depends on our, uh, on our aspirations and on uh, every day's work. I do believe, I uh, do recall Turkey and right now, Turkey is full of uh, infrastructure, great infrastructure projects, of mega infrastructure projects. For Ukraine? Not for Ukraine, but for themselves. Okay. And it was done within a very short period of time, 10, 5 years time. So it's, only, it's not about dreams, it's about the reality. Mr. Minister, who shares your idea and your dreams and this strategy until 2020 and, and further? Who shares it, not only from your team, but especially from those who are opposing you, well, it's, it's wonderful to hear who can share your ideas. And also those who are in charge of Ukraine, like Prime Minister, 
and also president, do they share your values and your ideas? Mm, yes. You have to be honest. Yes, they do, of course. Okay. Uh, actually, those things would uh, definitely be the ones that people like and they understand that as well. So it's at least one reason to support me. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, secondly, uh, I do know that uh, if you have a vision, you can make it. And uh, I do remember 2015 when we were, we were together with Pilowarski, we were, were badly criticized by all experts. So, no, forget, forget about aviation. There is no chance for poor country with poor salaries to fly somewhere internally or overseas. They were wrong, all of them. We have increased 20, 30, sometimes 70 percent of passenger flow in Ukrainian airports, 2016. It was done only because we took away the state from regulations. We Finally. took away the state from flight plans and it's open market right now. If you want to have destination from one point to another point, go and get it. Uh, there were a lot of other things. Let's say beginning of this year, I was told state road fund. No, no, forget about it. It will never happen. There is no majority of votes at the parliament. Nobody will support it. Uh, we have another priorities. We did it. So, even if you are criticized, even if uh, nobody trusts in you, uh, you should do that if you are con uh, convinced that you are doing the right thing and you learned a lot to be on the right side. At this point, I would finish the interview because this is, this is a very optimistic point, but I still have one extra question. You mentioned schemes before. Have you ever been approached with a scheme proposition yes. through your time and uh, how did you deal with that and what kind of... You, you, you can name people or you, you, you cannot name people, doesn't matter, just uh, try to explain us how does it work. Uh, it's work, you know, uh, it happens every day. Every day? So it's, it, but it's not, it, this is the problem of the country. Country should overcome it. Okay. And, Learn. Uh, uh, in my work, I'm trying not to focus on uh, fighting corruption because it's useless if I hunt every corruptioner with an axe in my hand. Uh, I do believe that I should do something good. I should uh, eliminate the source of the scheme to make it impossible to, uh, to implement. Actually, what, what was done with Prozoro. Right. And actually what we at Prozoro started as the Ministry of Infrastructure. Uh, there are many things we did with Ukrainian railways, with open data, with public. Uh, we made a lot of uh, uh, figures public for everybody. There is no corruption anymore because you don't have what to trade. Thank you for your job and uh, you. I wish you luck and uh, I hope you have that much esteem that you need until at least the end of your term and then we'll see what happens. You will Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you.